The immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the Long Rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. Swing from the gibbet. A terrible charge. A dreadful judgment, Squire Palmer. Tolliver. Captain Tolliver. Late to the good ship, fearful. Scourge of the Grand Banks. A hand, Sligo. Release us at once, or you'll be answering to my good friend, the Commissioner General. Note that in your logbook, Sligo. The good squire knows the Commissioner General himself. We'd best be taking... <laughs> to our heels. His Majesty's Navy might have blown me ship from under me. But me senses came through without a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be driving on. As soon as you tell your men to bring back my wife and daughter. When I have a thousand pounds sterling from you, me hearty. That's when you'll have back those two milk-faced females of yours. A thousand pounds? Gold is where you find it, Squire. To me, you're no different from a fat merchantman sailing out of Boston. And your women, the rich cargo to be brought in back. But a thousand pounds, that'll take time to raise. And that you have to the week's end. Payment according to these instructions. Take me more than a week to get to my banker. Ah, oh, the promise of a pearly ear snipped from your wife's head. Or a finger off your daughter's tender little hand should get you hopping to your banker like a racing sloop. <laughs> you bloodthirsty spawn of the devil. Avast, lads! Away, anchor, and hoist sail! <laughs> Commissioner, while you're lottie down with these... these men of the woods, Tolliver and his gang are probably cutting off my wife's ears. Are you going to send troops, or aren't you? Squire Palmer, these men of the woods, as you call them, are the troops I'm sending. Two men? Against a whole crew of desperate cutthroats? I must have been daft to even ask you for help to get back my wife and daughter. Well, there's nothing to do but leave the ransom as Tolliver wants. Squire, from what I've heard of this Tolliver, you're liable to not only lose your ransom money, but your wife and daughter, too. Tolliver's instructions are plain. If I leave the money at Big Rock, I get back Betty and Jane in the morning. But not be sure whether alive or dead. This is no guarantee of anything. Squire, I don't blame you for being overwrought. But don't let your loved ones rob you of your good senses. Go home, Squire. Let us handle things our way. If anyone can track down Tolliver and bring your wife and daughter to safety, Hawkeye and Chingachgook can. I'll take your advice, Commissioner. But remember, a thousand pounds is small loss when measured against a man's family. And I'll be holding you all responsible. If you save my money, I lose me my loved ones. Devilish mission I've set for you, Hawkeye. Needle in a haystack would be simpler to find. I take it that these pins cover the course of Tolliver's piracy. Last week, they attacked a wagon train here. I sent troops, but they found nothing. You know, these pirates seem to be as much at home in the woods as they were on the high seas. They must be fair to middling woodsmen to live in country like that. Those pins cover more than 50 miles of uncharted forest. Take many moons to track down pirate. Then I'm afraid we'd better place the safety of the squire's family in the hands of the Almighty. It's a mighty fine collection you got here, Commissioner. When we capture criminals, we confiscate their weapons. But I'd surrender them all just to see Tolliver's sword hanging there. Four of diamonds. Shouldn't I have heard of him? You should have. One of the most notorious highwaymen of the past few years. Of course, and he used this here as a kind of calling card. Hmm. You know something? He might use it again. Well, what's it say, Captain? Fifty pounds reward. 
for the recapture of a brigand named the Four of Diamonds. Fifty pounds? <laughs> a tidy sum to hold in your palms, eh? <laughs> While your itching palms are holding it, the Commissioner General will be piping a tune to keep you jigging from the yard arm. I heard something about this lad. I heard tell he was a tricky lover with his rifle. Well, do you think he's steering his course this way? But if he is, he'll learn soon enough I'll not tolerate any private buccaneering hereabouts. <laughs> Sligo, you and Hanks, get out to the trading post, out to the supplies. But I think next time somebody else should be set. I'm getting to be fair squirmy in these settlers' homespuns. The quicker you get the supplies, the quicker you'll be able to take off those farmer garbs. And see that you pay like any honest settler. It is the lone trading post hereabouts. And I wouldn't want to be cut off with supplies on account of you. Yeah. All right, me mateys, let's go. White man buy blankets from poor Indian. We come to buy supplies, not blankets. Uh, white man, maybe buy poor Indian fire water. Belay that. I buy no Indian, no fire water. Now, batten your lip and shove off. You're in my way. Find a customer? Two. Dress like farmer, talk like sailor. Both in trading posts now. Well, like we figured, even pirates gotta eat sometime. Well, I reckon the same goes for highwaymen. I'd not like to see my brother go alone. Well, the four of diamonds always played a lone hand, Chingachgook. But if I need you, I'll come a hooting and a hollering. <laughs> Fifty pounds. More than I could save in a year, and just for telling the Commissioner General I saw him. Yeah. But it ain't for the likes of us to reward like that. I know what you mean. Money comes to money. Some rich, fat burger will be the one to have the luck. Be with you as soon as I can, stranger. I had a dozen customers like you buying enough to feed an army every month. I wouldn't think twice about that fifty pounds. <laughs> I wouldn't think about it for a minute, storekeeper. Oh, and why not? Man scrapes out a paltry living and keeps on living by minding his own business. Four of diamonds. Don't make any sudden moves. You'll all be singing together in kingdom come. Now, I need a few supplies. A side of bacon and a bag of flour. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. You gentlemen look like you got most all what I want right in that pack. Put those things in there. You ain't going to get far with this. And judging from the size and heft of them, maybe you're right. But how far I get with them depends on who's going to carry them. Now, I think you get the idea. Let's get going. End of the trail, gents. You ain't even to choose down in cold blood, are you, Diamonds? There's an old saying, dead men tell no tales. Uh, but we wouldn't say nothing, or we'd forget we even saw you. Well, I'm a mite short of letter. I wouldn't think twice about wasting any on you. Now get going. You know, Diamond's supplies are hard for us to come by, too. Now, you ain't gonna take both them packs, are you? A man on the run needs all the supplies he can get. You don't have to be on the run. Look. If you'd stole that fancy iron of yours for a minute and listen, you'd find out that we're your kind of people. Nobody's my kind of people. Now get going. No, 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 you don't understand. We're both in the same business. And I'll wager there's more bounty on our heads than there is on yours. The only head worth more than mine belongs to a pirate by the name of Tolliver. You don't look like pirates. <laughs> don't let these homespuns throw you off course. Me name's Sligo. First mate to Captain Tolliver. And I could tell you right now, we could use a bucko like you and the crew. Well, I've always got along playing a lone hand. 
I better keep it that way. Oh, no, we, we got lots of action, diamonds. Why, we got a whole town of our own. Had plenty of booty to make you real fat. And besides, the Commissioner General would never get you if you was one of us. Keep talking, Sligo. Look, a fellow with your talents, no telling when the captain would make you an officer. With privileges of rank. Yeah. Reckon it wouldn't do any harm to talk it over with him. Okay, pick him up. But just remember, your captain convinces me different. There's no higher rank than a man with a gun in his hand. That Colin card of yours don't make you the four of diamonds in my log, matey. If I didn't know Hank's here, he could bring me some flowers and claim he was the Queen of May. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't too all fired eager to join up with you in the first place, Captain. Now, if you're doubting my word, I'll just take my leave. Now, hold on there, me bucko. Fake diamonds can be dazzling to those who don't know, till they're made to cut glass. What if I can prove that my diamonds cut sharp and clean? Then you'll put your mark to the crew log and take the oath of the Brotherhood. If, on the other hand, you're not the Four of Diamonds, but the Four of Flush, You'll be buzzard meat hanging from the nearest yard arm come nightfall. Well, that's two diamonds gone. Now, just to make it interesting, if you'll set that card edgeways, I'll try to cut it in two for you. <laughs> On that, I'll wager. You'll never come close. Thanks. <laughs> the odds are in your favor, Sligo. Captain sneezing on the heel of your words puts the stamp of truth on him. He's got something there, Sligo. I'll cover that. Three gold guineas and a piece of eight. I'm afraid that's a little rich for my blood. Being out of circulation for a while has left me without funds. Then what are you bragging about wagering for? Just my natural gambling instinct, I guess. Spoken to me like it. I'll cover that bet for him, Sligo. Oh, go ahead. Hanks, hold the card for him. Who, me? Stop shaking, Hank. Who's shaking? and overmatched. The four of diamonds, me lads, come to join our crew. How say? Hey! With me compliments. I never saw a better shooting. But then every man each to his own weapon. I agree, Captain. That's why I'm willing to stake myself on this. It's me pleasure to have you sign the oath of the Brotherhood. The book and flag, Sligo. All right, me hearties. Remember, I'm captain. Any disobedience that's minor, punishment according to Moses' law. Forty stripes, lacking one on the bare back. Deny the oath, and it's the yard arm. Man, it'd be just as dead one way or the other. A man of discernment. That's what I've been lacking in my ship's company. Make your mark, or if you can, scratch your name. If you're the man I'm thinking you are, your blood will be running a mite warmer at the sight of a couple of likely-looking wenches I've been thinking of inviting to the party. Well, if you don't mind, Captain, I'll get a little shut-eye before I join you. Breaking through iron bars and running away from the law makes a man a bit weary. Any berth that's empty out there in the cabins is yours for the taking. Thank you, Captain. But if it's all the same, I'll make my bed under a tree. I haven't seen much of the sky where I've been living lately. At least you escaped with your sense of humor. <laughs> If I saw you looking at me like that, I'd sleep with one eye open. That four of diamonds gives me bones the feeling of bad weather brewing. You and me, Sligo, we've outrun many a storm together by keeping an eye to the weather glass. 
Healthy looking, ain't he, for a man who claims he's been rotten away in a dag dungeon? Then you don't think he's really the Four of Diamonds, Captain? You should know me by now, Sligo. I'd like to check over my charts before tacking a new course. Get to the Commissioner General's office as fast as you can. Tell him Tolliver's hideout's the abandoned settlement by Feather Crick. We need all the men he can spare for to get them women out alive. My brother still act like outlaw? I'm a full-fledged pirate sworn to a devil's oath. Well, if I don't get back before I missed, the Four of Diamonds is going to be the ace of spades. My go. Run like wind. A fine bottle of the ruby. A company of fair ladies. The Commissioner General himself couldn't ask for more. <laughs> A toast. To the health of your loving husband and father, ladies. And to the hope he ain't forgot to send a thousand pounds. Yeah! <laughs> but you're not drinking, ladies. And when we're toasting your dear squire, drink up, it'll make your time here brighter. Now, come on now, girl, you needn't move away. And the zip of this will prove to you just how friendly I be. Two pairs of lips can put a stamp of love on it. You filthy swine! Leave my girl alone! The squire didn't need the money. You're lying. Honest, Captain! I looked and I searched and I waited. But nary a farthing could I find. I've been patient too long. <laughs> You're my share of the prize. You don't touch her, you foul beast! <laughs> <laughs> You're overstepping your mark, Captain. Mister, you're new here. Interfering with my word can mean the yard arm. I'm just speaking up for what's fair to me and the rest of the crew. The thousand pounds might still be on its way. I'm the one who decides what's fair for this crew. All the same, Captain, you've got no right to meddle with these women. Nobody tells me what to do and what not to do. I'm the captain here. Even a captain has to hold to the oath of the Brotherhood. And a lubber like you is charging me with a violation. If you want to put it that way, it's right in the articles of the oath. A man who offers to meddle with a prudent woman without her consent shall suffer death. You lubberly sea lawyer, you forgot one thing. Any man charging the captain with wrongdoing has to be ready to fight. More to my liking, Captain. And a better way to prove who should be in command here. All right, me hearty. my orders from now on. A couple of you give him a hand. I'm taking the ladies to the cabin. Ma'am.
Thank you for what you've done for us. But now, if you don't mind, we'd like to be left alone to our own privacy. It isn't as simple as all that, ma'am. You, you're just as bad as the rest of them. Talking us into putting our trust in you. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to. I'm not really the Four of Diamonds. I'm called Hawkeye. And it might comfort you to know I'm acquainted with your husband. I'm doing everything I can to get you to safety. But we'd be safe already if he'd paid the money. Well, it was me that told him not to. Sending money to these men, it'd be no assurance that they'd let you go unharmed. I'm going to call a meeting of all of them. See how far my authority will go. As soon as the streets are clear to guards, I want you to go out the back way and keep going until you come to a clearing. Wait for me there. You mean you'd send us out into the woods alone? There's nothing out there with fang or claw that would do you the harm that Tolliver and his gang will. You've just had a sample of that. All right, then. We'll do as you say. Good. Ah, our new captain. Well, no hard feelings, huh, Tolliver? Of course not. Besides, you're best at being fair fight. And the men will follow the proper trail under any captain. Said they should be standing guard outside. What I've got to say is for all ears. You hear that, lads? Give your new skipper your close attention. Well, that's mighty sporty of you, Tolliver. Man, I think I've got a way for us to collect that thousand pounds ransom money. Captain, before you tell us that idea, I'd like to show you something. A shackle scar. I earned mine tied to the galley benches of a prison ship. And almost every man of this crew has been shackled at one time or the other. Now, let's see the mark of your scars, Mr. Fora Diamonds. What kind of a game is this, Tolliver? The game of questions and answers. We want to know how you got them ruddy cheeks of yours after having been locked up in jail. You're going to give us the answer by showing us what your shackle mark looks like. Hanks, uncover his ankle. We're going to take you out and hang you to the nearest yard arm. Your Captain Tolliver for you, Commissioner. My wife and daughter, where are they? They're waiting for you in a clear, not far from here, just as snug as you please. I'll take you there. Tolliver's sword. Just where I've always wanted it. A symbol of the justice he and his cutthroats so richly deserved. To which they'd never been brought without the efforts of Hawkeye and Chingachgook. You're right, Squire. And thanks to them, honest citizens will now travel the northwest woods without fear of even seeing a pirate. Oh, they keep eyes open. They see one pirate. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, matey. Let's weigh anchor and shove off for the woods. Goodbye, Commissioner. Goodbye, Hawkeye. Squire, ladies. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans.